Humanity ruled the earth for millions of years. And then one day, the world was nearly destroyed. And only two pockets of humanity survived. Or so we thought. The city of Atlantis in the Mid-Atlantic and the city of Shambhala in the Tibet. These two cities were built to serve as arcs that the jinn would sail through time until the blue skies returned, the water purified, and life returned to the oceans, skies, and lands of the earth. Nothing in nature could destroy these cities. So unworried by the outside world, the jinn of both cities looked inward for tens of thousands of years, each city developing along its own course, both pursuing science, art, math, and culture. So when the city of Atlantis finally resurfaced, and the city of Shambhala, uh, uh, the city of Atlantis, Atlantis finally resurfaced from the ocean bottom, and the city of Shambhala shook off the blanket of snow it had been under all these many years, the people finally emerged from their long hibernation from the world and stepped back into it. They realized that humanity had not died out, but had regressed and become cave dwellers, fighting each other with sticks and stones, just as Albert Einstein had foreseen. And all signs of civilization had long since disappeared from a, the world culture. The people of the newly reopened cities of Shambhala and Atlantis, I will call the Jinn, J-I-N-N, -N, and everyone else I will call humans or men. It was as if the Jinn were gods among men, and they took full advantage of it, plundering and terrorizing at will. It gave them pleasure to walk the earth as gods among men. Soon all of the Jinn had hundreds of children outside of the city, half jinn, half human. Children of the jinn took no ownership of these children. It was a new Eden, and they were the gods of it. Then the jinn of Shambhala discovered the jinn of Atlantis, and now that they knew that the enemy lived, the bombs began to fall. Um, uh, um, uh, took for... Uh, hundreds of children. Whoops, a little it jumped a little. Then the jinn. Okay, yeah. Uh, so the jinn in either on either side could no longer leave the safety of the city without great personal risk, and they all knew how the bomb of bombs that had been used in the last war and how the winds had carried the sound described in communications from that period. Um, whoop! It jumped again. Uh, um, and they all knew how the bomb of bombs had been used in the last war and how the winds had carried the sound described in communications preserved from that day is sounding like a cosmic choir north till it came up south and east till it came round west and not quieting down to silence until it had wiped out nearly 90% of all living things on the planet and yet neither side knew which side had set it off. So now that both sides knew that the enemy had survived, they began to limit their time outside of the city, and they began to train some of the growing numbers of peri, half jinn, half humans, P-E-R-I, apostrophe S, to serve as their agents outside the city walls. They gave them witch stones which enabled them to meet in the Matrix, a place created by the Witch Stones in cyberspace, where the witches could meet with the Jinn. The Perrys that were loyal to Atlantis, these agents called themselves Jinn, because as half Jinn, uh, half human, they, they saw themselves still as part of Atlantis, now and forever, and strongly identified as Jinn. And this was encouraged, even though the jinn of Atlantis privately called them the same thing that the jinn of Shambhala called their agents, Peris. Later on, the jinn of Shambhala noticed that the humans that interacted with their peri called them witches, and that name stuck, and it was adopted by all in Shambhala. So today, in world culture, Shambhala's peris are called witches.
while Atlantis's peris are called Jinn. In this story, either term is interchangeable. A golden age of carnage and destruction had returned to the world, a golden age that was shattered when the mystical chorus of the bomb of bombs was once again heard in the world. It began as a lone sound, but soon grew into a mighty cosmic chorus that swept north till it came round south and east till it came round west. Shambhala and Atlantis sailed their cities and once again vanished from history, and all communication between them and their peris ended. Were they swept away? Did they make it... Uh, No one, no one outside of the cities knows that answer. And uh, both cities were basically forgotten from time, erased from time. And this, and in this time when the bomb of bombs went off, populations dropped. Uh, but there was no great extinction event. Um, Shambhala. Shambhala's peris, as well as Atlantic's, Atlantis's peris, described that in the absence of their jinn, the war would continue. They would from then on act as if the jinn were still in charge, yet now it would be they themselves acting within the matrix that would make all of the decisions concerning the war for their respective camps.